this video is commercials that became lost media so these commercials literally do not exist anymore like you can't find these commercials at all so let's go see what this video is talking about from orbit um let's see we've already talked about lost media and disturbing commercials on this channel before but what if i told you that there are a few commercials that became lost media such as a lost subway commercial featuring rick and morty a missing chuck e cheese commercial and even some lost Disney Channel bumpers. Mm. So in today's video, we will be talking about commercials that became. Hey Morbid, why don't you Morbid? And hey Morbid, I know you're watching too. I know you. I know you. I know you're watching right now. Why don't you try to find the Blue Rye Scary Face Lost Media? Somebody let Morbid know about that. See if he can find the Blue Rye actual video clip of the video behind the Blue Rye. I actually want to see if, if Morbid can can find that because that shit is lost to time, bro. Nobody can find that shit, bro. If anybody can find it, Morbid can now. Lost Media. Welcome back to another video. I do want to quickly mention that I am a saying? bit sick, so I can't talk. Oh uh, yeah, Morbid. Morbid. I, I seen Morbid story. Morbid talking about like these. You know what I'm saying? His, his his voice went down a couple octaves, but um, Morbid. I hope you feel better, bro. Let's go to the straight into the joint. Rick and Morty new Jared commercials. In 2015, Rick and Morty was a relatively new show that Subway approached Justin Roiland, the creator of Rick and Morty, to make a few commercials for Subway using the Rick and Morty characters. These commercials were titled The New Jared, on which Rick and Morty would replace Jared, Jared. and become the new Jared. Oh, man. In case you do not know who Jared is, Jared Fogle. Anybody know who Jared Fogle is? Anybody? <laughs> oh, man, bro. That is... Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Jared 445 was the spokesperson for Subway for 15 years straight and was nicknamed the Subway guy. Justin was invited to the Pointless podcast where he talked more about these commercials. We, we had a, we had a deal to do some Subway for Rick and Morty to do <laughs> what? Subway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and he was like, "Oh, it'd be funny if uh if Morty's like, "I'm the new Jared. I'm the new Jared. like he's like all worked up." Oh, it's like, oh, "Hey, hey Morty, yeah. Morty, look, look who I have in the corner over here, Morty." Oh my god, who who is that? It's Jared from Subway, Morty. We're the new Jareds now, Morty. We're the new Jareds from Subway. Oh my god, we're the new Jareds. We're the new- I be forgetting. I'm never in my hood, you chat. Don't shoot me. I've never watched Rick and Morty in my life. I'm gonna keep it all the way K with y'all. Um, never watched Rick and Morty in my life. I when I ain't lose. Do I, do I, am I low-key missing out? Am I low-key missing out, chat? Am I low-key missing out? But- I didn't know that he does both voices. I didn't know that he does both voices for the main characters. I'm, I'm missing out. Yes, yes, yes. Same, same. Not really. That show's funny. I don't watch it religiously. I'm, I'm more of a Family Guy, American Dad, Cleveland Show type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I've never, I've never watched Rick and Morty, so I can't, I can't really. But I've seen a few episodes. Rick and Morty fell the fuck off after season three. Damn. It reminds me, Roddy, you finish high on live chat. The one time I tried to play it on stream on the OPC. I don't know what the fuck was going on. I think that was when it was in its early stages and the shit was glitching out for me, nigga. I refunded that game right after that stream. I'm not going to capture you, my nigga. New Jareds of Subway! Where are the new Jareds, Morty? Like, all the commercials had to do with, like, either Rick want, like, or Morty right. being like, I'm the new Jared! I'm the new Jared! And Rick, like, calm down, Morty! Calm down! I'm the new Jared of Subway! Eat fresh! <laughs> Eat the of all this stuff. You may be thinking to yourself why these commercials never aired. After all, they were fully made and ready to go. Well, the day after Roiland sent the commercials to Subway, Jared Fogle was raided at his home where police found that Jared was in possession of CP. Mm. Because of this, Subway cut all ties with Jared, and since the Rick and Morty commercials were about Jared, they decided to scrap these commercials. It is Damn. pretty ironic how these commercials are about replacing Jared, but in reality, Jared actually Ross, got fired. That. So Subway might as well release these commercials since they did need a real replacement. But it does make sense why they did not use these commercials. Since these commercials- Rick and Morty been around that long? When did Rick and Morty come out? It came out when that nigga got uh, arrested? Damn. Commercials have been made. Where are they? In the Pointless podcast, Roiland did say that he had all the so commercials in Damn. eight different flash drives, but he lost four of them and doesn't know where they are. Although he still has the four out of the eight flash drives, he is not allowed to leak these commercials or else he will get in serious trouble by Subway, making these Subway commercials lost media. Damn. Hey guys, it's Wildman. So huge thank you to Morbid for fun for having me on. And uh, yeah, let's get into some- I was about to say, I was like, damn, we, they, who, 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 who got this handsome ass nigga in the video? 
um i guess i guess this is a, a duo video okay let's see. lost media so the first piece of lost media that i wanted to take a look at is a blood and guts bumper that was used in nickelodeon so blood and guts is a partially found piece of media that is assumed to be a uk animation that supposedly aired on nickelodeon the short is around one minute and 30 seconds long however most of what we know about this bumper is mostly just speculation so in this short you see two characters named blood and guts and they enter i like how everybody in chat just go crazy over this thing and like Oh, shit. Yo. <laughs> tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. A dungeon looking room. In the room, Blood would do a freestyle while Guts makes a beat with his farts. Kill bomb beat box. What the fuck is this, nigga? My name is Blood, and this is Guts. Uh, it's what very childish hell? humor, but I mean, it's Nickelodeon. This piece of lost media was found on August 6, 2018, and was posted to Vortex 360's YouTube channel. And this is the reason why Lost Media Wiki labels this piece of lost media as partially found, because it is believed that there's another Blood and Guts short that is still lost. And the only thing that people pretty much remember from this short is that it shows a chandelier. Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater Animated Commercial Chuck E. Cheese, better known as Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater, Theater in 1979 was a very popular piece. Chuck E. Cheese used to have some lit ass commercials. I ain't gonna cap. I I would be jealous as fuck seeing Chuck E. Cheese commercial and all them kids in the commercial having fun and going down the slide and shit. I'd be pissed. I, ain't gonna lie. I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Chuck E. Cheese fell off now though. I ain't gonna cap. It's a chain. Better known as Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater animated commercial. Chuck E. Cheese, better known as Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater in 1979, was a very popular pizza chain back in the day. One of the earliest animated commercials for Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater, which aired in 1979, is considered to be lost media. The commercial is titled The Great All-American Pizza Time Show, and it featured an animated version of Chuck E. Cheese, the chain's iconic mascot, and showcased the different attractions available at the restaurant. Damn, this nigga was dead ass ugly. I used to be terrified of Chuck E. Cheese, I ain't gonna cap. I used to be, I actually used to be terrified of this nigga, bro. And, and Fine Ass and Freddy's, y'all niggas didn't help either, bro. Y'all niggas made that shit worse, bro. I ain't gonna cap. But one thing that niggas say, always say nowadays, is that the Chuck E. Cheese pizza was ass. Like, the pizza itself was terrible, but I don't remember it being ass. I don't know, maybe it's because I, I was a kid. But I don't remember the Chuck E. Cheese pizza being ass. That shit used to bust, in my opinion. But maybe, maybe I, like, my palate changed type shit. But niggas st steady saying the Chuck E. Cheese pizza is ass, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. It was all right, it was mid. For that stream? No. God. Despite its popularity at the time. That shit reheated shit. If it was reheated, then... Them niggas reheat the fuck up that drink. Stuff can be still be good reheated. Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater animated commercial from 1979 is no longer available for viewing. It is believed to have been lost due to the fact that many TV networks did not archive commercials at the time. Mm. Additionally, VHS tapes and other forms of home recording technology were not widely available, making it difficult for individuals to preserve these type of commercials. There was a Chuck E. Cheese brochure from 1979 that mentions the lost commercial and confirms that it was about 30 to 60 seconds long. While the commercial itself has not been found, there are a few cells Ew, from the animation bro. that have survived and are now considered rare collector's items. Bro, These two animation show. cells are owned by Damon Berland, who is the owner of Smitty Super Service Station, which is a small private museum that collects vintage Chuck E. Cheese and showbiz pizza memorabilia. From them. the looks of it, this commercial is sadly lost media forever. Damn. So this next one is on the Disney wand bumpers. The Disney wand bumpers was- Ooh! Yo, these joints used to be hard, bro. Hold on, uh... <clears throat> hey, my name's da Daquantavius. You're watching nigga channel. Oh no, this watch it right here. Oh. Yo, these are just, yo, this is these classes right here. I ain't gonna cap. Free lawsuit? Please, 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 this the no, please. I played like 30 seconds, please, please, please. Um Jenner take it wasn't on, on stuck in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Real niggas remember. A series of short bumpers that aired on the Disney Channel from the early 2000s, and I think oh, they Jake Paul was on Disney Channel. Yo, if we go back, there's some niggas on Disney Channels that are doing crazy shit now that you like. Damn, they was on Disney Channel, bro. They might still be doing it to this day, but I mean, honestly, I'm not too interested because you know Disney fell off after Phineas and Ferb. 
mean, come on. Like, try naming one Disney Channel show from 2023. Other than... Can't do that. <laughs> can't can't do that. And Amphibia. Amphibia is great. But that was can't like... Can't do that. I don't even know what the fuck that but is. Yeah, but yeah, in these bumpers, various Disney Channel stars would wave a wand and draw the Disney Channel logo, accompanied by the phrase, you're watching Disney Channel. And while many of these bumpers were widely broadcast and are available on various online platforms, some of them have become lost media. The exact number of lost bumpers is unclear, but it is known that some of them were produced for shows that had shorter runs or were less popular, mm. making them less likely to be preserved or uploaded online. Damn. And one reason that some of these bumpers- It's true, because a lot of these were iconic, bro. Like, I miss, I miss, I, there was 104 days of summer vacation, school comes along, just ended to the any problems, I'm gonna know whatever that nigga said bro this i remember vivid memories bro just watching tv and shit bro not caring about nothing in life not stress or anything like that nigga like just being mad that i got homework nigga just watching disney channel and seeing these little bumpers bro it would just make my day better bro i'm not trying to be that old head nigga who was it would be like damn it was better back in the day bro but tv well you really used to be like that bro like I, i'm not gonna catch you bro niggas make a time machine i'm gonna be the first nigga going back just to see some shit like this i ain't gonna cap have become lost media is that they were produced before the era of digital archiving and, over, online streaming. and for the most part most television programs over. didn't archive their programming and physical copies may have been lost or damaged over time which makes a lot of programming lost media additionally some of the bumpers may not have only been produced in limited quantities or used for short periods of time making them even harder to find so now there are a lot of Disney Channel lost bumpers, but I'm not going to be going over all of them because there's just way too many. If you want an idea of how many there actually are, just go to the Lost Media Wiki Damn. and scroll down the long list of Disney Half these bumpers shit is lost. that have become lost. But Damn. a few that I want to dive in today are two missing bumpers. How the fuck is shit partially found, nigga? You found a piece of it, nigga? How? Where the other half? Featuring Miley Cyrus promoting the Hannah Montana show and the Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus Best of Both Worlds concert movie, which is just gone now, which is crazy. There's yeah. also a missing Disney indent bunter featuring Olaf from Frozen, which I feel like I probably saw as a kid. I think I have like a vague memory How of How the fuck is that shit lost? Nigga, when did Frozen come out? Frozen came out like, like, when did Frozen come out, nigga? How was that shit lost? No, I recorded that? That. But on top of that, every star from High School Musical 2013? 1 has their Jesus Disney Christ. indents just Man, Frozen came out in 2013? Damn, that was a whole decade ago. What the fuck? That is crazy. ...completely lost, which is pretty crazy to think about considering that that movie was such a big thing at the time. Nonetheless, all of their bumpers of them drawing the Disney Channel logo are just completely gone. But there are bumpers of them from the High School Musical sequels, so... There's that. And finally, there's a partially found Disney indent bumper with the Jonas Brothers. But the reason that it's considered partially found is because the only footage of it online is a camcorder clip of a TV screen. Mm. And to be considered found, it needs to be found in its raw I feel like form I remember this one, bro. Quality. Like I said, there's That's tons crazy. Of a lot of these, you like, damn, I seen this as a kid, and now you can't even find it. You can't even look at no recording of it. Most of these, you can't even find, bro. It's just a lost memory, bro. Y'all ever remember something as a kid like a tv show or something as a kid and you're like yo what's this one show that this one thing is in and then you remember a specific like clip or scene as a kid but you can't find it no matter how hard you look you can't find it because one you don't eat you either don't know the name or that shit is lost you know what i'm saying i hate when that shit happens i'm not going to capture you of more missing Disney indent bumpers, but I can't cover them all in this video. McDonald's Japan commercial. McDonald's mm. opened its first location in Japan in 1971 and soon began producing commercials exclusively for the Japanese market. While some of these commercials have been preserved and can be found online, many of the earlier commercials produced before 1975 are considered lost media. Main reason Man, why these earlier shit. Nigga, I know this was was older, but god damn, nigga, you can literally count the pixels. We've been, we've really like gone a long way, nigga, in terms of camera quality. You could literally count the pixels in this shit. McDonald commercials may have been lost is that the technology for archiving and preserving television commercials was not as advanced as it is today. Quality, Additionally, nigga, this on a fucking toenail. The commercials were likely only meant to be broadcast for a short period of time making them less likely to be preserved or saved for future viewing. One of the only pre-1975 Japanese McDonald commercials that has been found was posted to YouTube in 2021 by The Blue Fortune. And in the description, they credit Nancy Phillip for finding this commercial. This commercial just shows Ronald McDonald showing off some cups. I hated that nigga Ronald, bro. 
Ronald was such a bitch, bro. I hate Ronald. Um, Naya, good night. Thank you for coming to the stream. Thank you for coming to the stream. I hated Ronald, bro. How can you not be creeped out by this? I don't even have a clown fear, bro. We love Ronald around here. I hated that nigga, bro. I don't know. I don't even have a clown fear, but the nigga was just creepy, nigga. Like, the Burger King uh, crown nigga was better. And I ain't talking about the mascot. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. That nigga better. You know what I'm saying? Bro, there, like, there's nothing all putting about this. There's nothing off putting about that. That's not like that's not that's not that's not crazy. This not crazy. This not crazy to y'all. This not crazy. Oh my god. It's saying red cup, white cup, rock, paper, scissors. Ah, oh, W bilingual uh app pro. Jesus Christ. So in this next one, we're going to be covering the Tyler, the Creator Mountain Dew commercials. So if you're a big Tyler fan, you probably know about these already. In 2013, Mountain Dew released a series of commercials directed by Tyler, featuring a character named Felicia the Goat. The three commercials mm. show Felicia in different scenarios, including causing a scene at a restaurant by assaulting a waitress, being pulled over by the police, and receiving a Dew UI. And finally, a commercial showing Felicia the Goat in a police lineup. So these first two commercials were received pretty well. Damn. I mean, Dew UI. It's pretty funny. By the way, if your favorite soda is Mountain Dew, don't worry about dieting or getting in the gym. Don't worry about none of that. If your favorite soda is Mountain Dew, don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about none of that. Don't worry about none of that. Sure, they all had very edgy shock value in them when it came to Felicia actually beating up a waitress Mountain Dew, for Mountain no, Dew. I haven't had Dew, Mountain Dew. But in 2013, bus, shock value was at its peak in mainstream, and so people kind of just let this slide. However, controversy sparked after the third well, commercial aired, which some people have even labeled the most racist commercial of all time. Damn. In this commercial, we can see the waitress that was beat up by Felicia in the restaurant and has to choose someone from the police lineup. In the police lineup, we see three black men and Felicia. We can also see Felicia taunting the emotionally distressed waitress, saying, you'll never catch me. And Damn. another racist aspect of this commercial was the Her eyes got my bad. fact that the police officer holding a his, mountain his ears is big. tells I'm the waitress to just pick someone and that she should just point to the man with a do-rag, which wasn't even the person who committed the crime. The commercials wow. were subsequently pulled off the air right away, but they aren't considered to be lost media. But people do speculate that there is a fourth commercial featuring Felicia the Goat, but the commercial was obviously never released because of the backlash from this third commercial. And the reason people were speculating this is because in an interview with Billboard, they did ask Tyler the Creator's manager, Christian Clancy, if there's a fourth commercial to this, but Clancy just referred that question to Mountain Dew and instead so we don't know if this why, supposed why commercial? fourth commercial even exists but going back to that controversial third commercial mountain dude kind of issued an apology on twitter they just went on to say that hey guys made a big mistake we've removed the offensive video from all our channels hash i'm not gonna lie i would have lost my mind if i seen that commercial i ain't gonna cap i'm like well, who's tag you? fail 2013 man spongebob got milk commercial the lost God Spongebob milk. Got Milk commercial featured Spongebob and Patrick attempting to enjoy a glass of chocolate milk. But Spongebob was having difficulty drinking the milk because he is a sponge and was instead absorbing the milk. The commercial mm. ends with the famous- How do you got milk under the sea? Y'all niggas is underwater. How y'all got milk? How, how you got milk? Milk. How you got milk? How work? Something up, chat. Something up, man. I don't know. Got milk slogan displayed on the screen. The commercial originally aired in 2001 as a well, part of a yeah. promotional campaign by the California Milk Processor Board. This commercial was considered to be lost media for many years until it was found and posted up to YouTube in October of 2022 by the Tune Archivist. Damn. Hey, Patrick. That shit was lost until 2022. You gotta really wonder how niggas is finding this shit. Yo, if niggas can find this shit off the, off the, after all these years, if niggas can find this shit, chat, the Blue Rye Scary Face video may be found. Twitch, please make a thing where we can go back to older streams.
please. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe we'll find a Twitch uh, scary bride face origin video one day. You know what I'm saying? How about a glass of delicious, creamy chocolate milk? Creamy? Oh, I love chocolate milk. And it's good for you. <laughs> 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 chocolate milk. Yeah. You can absorb it for yourself. Got chocolate milk? Mm. All right, so this next one is about Cartoon so Network responds. Between 1997 and 1998, Cartoon Network what aired a series of themed bumpers, and one of these was called Cartoon Network Responds, which featured supposed letters and emails from fans. The letters were often answered in a very cynical and mocking manner, sometimes even poking fun at the cartoons themselves. These bumpers were aired from early 1997 until June 1998, and many were produced, Scary but not robot. all of them have been found. Saying. Currently, 13 out of 20 bumpers have been found, while 7 do remain missing, and 3 of them are just completely unknown as to what they even were. This does make them partially found lost media, because some of these bumpers can still be found on YouTube. High Noon Tunes Cartoon Network Bumpers Why do I feel like I remember this? There's no way I remember this. This shit look like old as hell. It's High Noon Tunes What's that show that used to have hands? Well, there's a lot of shows that used to have hands. What's this show? No, I'm thinking of uh fucking Leslie from from Gumball. If you know, you know. Tunes was a programming block that aired on Cartoon Network between 1994 and 1996. The show was hosted by Matt Thompson and Adam Reed, who used cowboy hand puppets Obi? named Haas and Lil Joe to present the block. I, it Each episode familiar. of the block had a special theme, such as Quick Draw McGraw, Pure Mustang. Haas and Lil Joe like also this. hosted other Cartoon Network events, including Spring Break '95 and the Haas Haunted House Party in October of 1995. Unfortunately, very few of these high noon tunes can be found online, with only a few promos of the Quick Draw McGraw episode being available on YouTube. However, in 2019, a significant number of these bumpers of and by the way, the whole ham puppet shit, nigga. I hated the not hand puppet. The, well, the whole the whole yeah, basically the whole hand puppet shit with niggas is 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 have their hands as actors and shit. Those shows are probably some of the creepiest shit out there. I don't know who came up with that shit, but that shit's not it. I ain't gonna lie. Of the high noon tunes were found by a YouTube user called B Dobbers Archive. All of these bumpers have been now archived, and you can now view them on YouTube. But there is a very few of them that are still lost media. Alright, so this last one is Fake Doomsday Lost Filipino PSA. The Fake Doomsday or Hoax Doomsday is a lost public service announcement or PSA from the Philippines with an unknown creator and purpose. The ad starts with the word rapture and a date is displayed at the bottom of the screen. If I see a, a commercial saying the, like rapture with some creepy music in the back and it has a date, nigga, I'm not gonna hose you at that point, bro. You just gotta disappear, bro. You just gotta, you just gotta find somewhere else to go at that point, bro. I'm leaving before that date. Followed by disturbing photos from the Holocaust with bald, pale, and skinny people being dragged by their necks. When oh, no, this is even worse than I thought. What the fuck? Oh, no, this is even crazier than I thought. What the hell? This is report seeing the number 666 in some photos of the people. What kind of commercial? Who made that? That's a commercial? with it on their foreheads. The PSA has a somber background score and voiceover with this is a paid advertisement shown throughout the entire PSA. Who the fuck paid the, uh, the advertisement, Kanye? My bad. Say, the ad only aired on IBC 13 during top 10 movie trailers of the week in the early 1990s alongside the PCSO Sinocilla commercial. However, the true sure purpose of this crazy. PSA remains unknown, with some people speculating that it was meant to scare or warn viewers about the impending doomsday, while others believe that it was aimed to encourage repentance and the acceptance of Jesus Christ as a savior. Nah, nigga, if I seen that commercial come on, I'm not gonna hose you. Like, that's, that's crazy. I ain't gonna hose you. Unless this was a very disturbing PSA that I can't imagine watching this as it is. Again, huge out, thank you bro. to Morbid for fun for having me on. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, see ya. The Grumpy Cat Meow Saya commercial. Grumpy Cat's worst Christmas.
Who remembers Grump uh, Grumpy Cat? I remember this nigga. R.P. Grumpy Cat, man. Ever is a holiday-themed, made-for-TV movie produced by Lifetime, which was first broadcast on November 29th, 2014. I think it's blurred out for copyright reasons. 14. The film revolves around the popular internet meme and real-life cat named Grumpy Cat, who is known for her permanently grumpy facial expression. The movie features a meta sense of humor that references a cat's celebrity status and merchandise, as well as a cameo by Aubrey Plaza, the actress who voices Grumpy Cat. To promote the film, a series of online ad spots were created featuring Grumpy Cat and Plaza. This nigga had a film? When did... When did, like, did I miss something, nigga? Like, I ain't never heard of this. in Christmas-themed scenarios. The ads were mostly simple in nature, using the same sets and costumes, with the exception of one of them, which should Why, Plaza I think it's copyright, because it Mary, is like a film, so you can't, like, show it. And Grumpy Cat as Baby Jesus, dubbed the Meow Saya. Get it? I know Meow. that cat was tired, nigga. Saya, Masaya, Meow Cat. Right. Yeah, got, it's a it pretty funny part. The spots were shared on various news sites and social media platforms, where they were widely shared and even turned into GIFs. At the time of the film's release, Plaza was already well known for her role in the TV series Parks and Recreation, mm. which added to the buzz around the project. While the ad spot- Yet, yeah, niggas never heard of it. Nobody's ever talked about it. We've never, never heard of it. Spots generated some interest online. Unfortunately, some of the videos that were embedded on the news sites have since been made private making it lost media. Mm. Lifetime, the ones who made the movie, did release a teaser of the Meow Saya onto YouTube, but later privated the video as well. Dang. Luckily with the way back machine, we could go back in time to watch the lost media Meow Saya ad. Behold, baby grumpy, the Meow Saya. Not gonna lie, the film was, was, was definitely about to be shit. I, I, the, the shit was gonna be ass, I ain't gonna lie. Like, just, just based on ads. She doesn't want myrrh, she wants tuna. As you can see, only about 6,000 people saw this ad on YouTube before Lifetime decided to private the video. Also, like I've mentioned, Aubrey Plaza does voice Grumpy Cat, but I'ma be honest, her voice acting sucks garbage. <laughs> like, it's awful. It's not her fault because at the end of the day, you have to voice a monotone cat. So I could see the difficulties there, but they should have just hired Moist Critical to voice Grumpy Cat. That would be fine. I pay money to see that Grumpy Cat movie, uh, voiced by Charlie. I I I I, I pay to see that. Hang on. Because lie. honestly, if he did, hey guys, what's up? It's Moist Critical. <laughs> All right, that's it for this time. See you. Like my bad. The movie would have performed a hundred times better. Also in the movie, they did not CGI Grumpy Cat at all. So whenever Grumpy Cat talks, oh, he talks with his mouth closed, which doesn't make sense. What the hell? So if there's one thing that you could take away from this video is that Lifetime makes garbage movies. And trust me, I've seen so many Lifetime movies because my mom is obsessed with that channel and I could confirm that all of their movies are garbage. Yeah. And that is the end. Hey. Morbid, good ass video, man. Good ass video. It's crazy how much shit gets lost. No, that's actually crazy to think about. The Disney shit, bro, is what the Disney little bumpers is the shit that I'm really mad that's lost, bro. Can we can we find I don't even know if I can look some shit up. If I look it up, they're gonna be like Disney gonna come after my ass. Hold on. Disney um bumper. You're watching Disney Channel. I just wanna I just wanna see how much I can how much of them are still on YouTube, nigga. But a lot of them are lost, nigga. That's crazy. And you're watching Disney. Damn me. You found a lot of them though. Ashley Tuesday, that was my dog. I was my dog. I go a cat. I go a cat. You can find a lot of them though. But some lost. That's tough. That's tough. Anyways though, good video for Morbid. Good video for Morbid. You know what I'm saying? Good video.